Uh, feels like we could record three or four episodes tonight, Steve. You got enough wind in your sails? I, I got time. Let's just do them all. Let's do all the episodes Let's just do for the all rest of the year. 50 Let's remaining episodes. Get them out of the way. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle on the Guitar. Buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. podcast. And we're in this st- video, <laughs> we're going to start with a topic and then we'll get into the ads. The question of this topic is, should you sell your favorite guitar? Read the read the topic. Post, <laughs> this Steve. was sent by Mason Henry Summers. He says, should you sell your favorite guitar to pay some bills? And be happy with a couple of Squire Classic Vibes. I My initial instinctive reaction to this is I'm assuming your favorite guitar is a nice guitar because you need to pay some bills. Mm-hmm. So I'm, well, let's just call it a $2,000 guitar. You need to pay $2,000 worth of bills. It's your favorite guitar. Presumably you only need to pay like... $1,400 worth of bills because you're going to get two Squire Classic Vibes. Yeah, but he's going to he's gonna pay bills and then the money left over, he can buy Classic Vibes. So he maybe needs $1,000? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's your favorite guitar, though. Yeah. Like, it really comes down to... Like, what are the qualities of your favorite guitar... Is it something you can get again, or is it something that, like, has special sentimental stuff? Right. You know, like, did someone special make it? Did it have special qualities that you can't get again? If it happens to be, like, something that's in production right now, and when you get money back, you can go buy a new one, and you're fairly confident that, like, oh, I'll get one that's just as good as what I already have, then, yeah, I guess sell it and pay your bills. I don't know, man. If it's, like... If it's special, sell your other junk. Sell the stuff that you don't like. That's my gut reaction on it. What is your favorite guitar? Oh, that's a, that's a hard... I could probably come up with five or ten favorite guitars. Uh, like, if if you asked me, like, which one would I grab if I was running out the door and the, the sure. house was burning, I would probably have the Ampro 2 in one hand and the Swiftwing in the other. So two guitars, that's like my gut reaction right now is like, I just grab those and run. The kids will still be in bed. Ryan's out well, the I'll have I'll have Henry around my shoulders and I'll be holding Edith. It, it, I'll be holding onto the back of her shirt with my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so, so I mean, I think that's, that is kind of a... I like how my wife is not helping at all in this scenario. <laughs> would, would that be like the last, uh, she's on, she's in, she's out on a girl's trip. She's the one who set the fire. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Why are all the doors locked? She just went outside five minutes ago. <laughs> that's so terrible and dark. <laughs> Yes, hashtag not all women, just Ryan's wife. No, she, my wife is not going to burn down the house with us inside. It's, it's not a concern at all. This is it's all not. humorous. You are the one who brought it. You know how we're this. laughing about this? Okay, what were you going to say? Um, no, so so I, I think that's kind of like that is. Um, Would I sell those to pay bills? Yeah. Because those are both actually like, well, the swept wing, I, I, I guess I don't really know what the value on that is. New is 900. But the Ampro 2 is a guitar that you could list and probably sell like within a week. Yeah, I think if I had to sell them quick, I'd be knocking them down a little bit. And then I'd probably round out about two grand with both of them with together. Both of them. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, the 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 swept wing has it's been used. It's got some bumps sure, and scratches sure. and stuff like that. It's got some it's got some dinks in it that are well earned and it's it's, it's earned is great, you know. Yeah. And of course, like this is always a tough question because you could have picked like your gold sparkle strat, which is like worth basically worthless. 
Yeah, I'm I not mean gonna, it's not yeah. worthless, but it's it's a Mexican. My, yeah, it's a my hand painted Mexican. Yeah, strat, Mexican so. strat thing. Um, yeah, I wouldn't grab that. I think it's a great guitar from you know my life experience with it, but it's not mm. one I grab as a player's guitar right now. I'd probably grab the Player Plus before that right now, just as a playable guitar, or the Yamaha. Mm. I mean, really, the Sweatwing, the Player Plus. The Ampro 2 and that Yamaha. I grabbed those four, and I got a lot of bases covered yeah. for what I like to play. But you, you didn't know? grab any bases, so you have no bases I have no, covered. My bases are not covered. Would you... What What do you... If you had to grab a favorite guitar in each hand as the fire is burning and there's you're somehow also carrying your two children, which two guitars are you grabbing, Steve? I'm grabbing... See, that, again, that's tough. It's like, what's my favorite guitar is my Red Telecaster. Right. I'm probably grabbing that. Functionally, you can't really sell that. You're not going to pay bills with that. Yeah, I'm not going to pay bills with that. The Jagstang, I could pay like a bill. Right. Maybe. Well, same. Like, sell those two guitars and I can, I can almost pay my mortgage. You right. know. Almost. I'd have to sell a lot of guitars to pay my mortgage. <laughs> um... <laughs> Really, if I'm going to, here's the thing. Real talk, if I'm going to sell things to pay bills, it's going to be pedals because they're quick and easy yeah. to move. I can list a lot of them. I know, I know not everyone has as many pedals as I do, but right. a lot of us do have a lot of pedals. Mm -hmm. Let's be, a lot of us has too, have too many pedals. Let's be honest. It's a lot easier to list 10 pedals than it is to ship one guitar. That's true. You know? That's true. It's, it's, that's the reality. It's, it's, and like you list 10 pedals and maybe five of them sell, but five will sell, mm -hmm. you know, someone will buy them, especially if you price them competitively on reverb, or whatever, someone's going to buy them. So if I had to pay bills, I'm not going to guitars. I'm going to pedals first. I want to approach this from the other direction. Cause okay. I think, I think, you know, should you sell a favorite guitar, whether it's sentimental, sentimental, we're missing mentality. We're missing the element of replacing it with budget stuff. Right. Yeah. You know? uh, well, I, and I, I think that question is like pretty complicated too. It's like my, in a, in a push, like I need to take pictures of my Gibson base because I want to sell it. Um, if I was like needed cash, the next thing I would probably sell is my Les Paul. Mm. That's probably the most between the, my two Gibsons. My two Gibsons are the two most valuable instruments I own. I think, um, and both of those by, and I mean by like a significant amount. Right, right. Like, um, and then after that, maybe my Jag Stings. I would guess is in like the eight nine hundred range. Sure. My M I J Strats kind of mangled, so maybe in like the six to eight hundred range. I don't know. Uh, I really haven't. Yeah, I haven't even like watched prices for any of this stuff, except for the base. Because again, I'm I, I need to sell it. Um, well, I don't need to. I just I don't. Hypothetically, you do. No, and realistically, I also do. Oh, in real life, you do. In real life, I want to. I'm looking at moving it. Okay. Whether or not I sell it or trade it for a, a Roni is a different question. What it's like having it's a maybe Roni. on the table. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, the other side of this is. Can it, I would say, can a Squire Classic Vibe replace your favorite guitar? And I would say, like, depending on what your favorite guitar is. Maybe. Maybe. Like, there's a good chance. If, if hypothetically, I had to sell all my guitars to pay bills, I would absolutely consider getting back into uh, the, back into owning an offset via a Classic Vibe. Yeah, yeah. Jazz master. Absolutely. Or one of the, like the 60th anniversary ones or something right, like that. Right. You know, some like, kind of squire, some kind of, I, I could totally get back into owning an offset via squire, mm -hmm. via squire, you know? Uh, so yeah, I think that is a totally viable move, but man, if it's your favorite guitar, like I, you really need more specifics here. It's all, know? it's almost like, and this is like a weird thing to think about. I think it's kind of like, I feel this way with some music artists. Do you have, do you have any music artists in your life where your favorite, your favorite album by them is not everyone else's favorite album. And it's just because it's the first album you heard from them. 
Mm, I don't know. I don't, th- I don't think I have anything that fits that very specific scenario that I could feel like you have something loaded from your own person. No, no, no. I, I do. I actually go through this. I have this okay, with okay. like multiple artists. Okay. So like, for example, I have found that the rift between uh, Death Cab for Cutie fans, whether their number one album is Transatlanticism or Plans, which were two albums, it was back-to-back albums, uh, really comes, tends to come down to which album did that person hear first. And whichever album they heard first is their favorite. Okay. Um, so where I'm going with this is like, I could see somebody saying that's a Squire classic vibe is my favorite guitar hmm. if they owned it first. And they maybe they also own... So you think this is a trick question? I don't think it's a trick question. I think, I think nostalgia is a factor. I sure. think... Squire, a Squire classic vibe could be good enough to be someone's favorite guitar. I don't oh, think, totally. I don't think if you own like an Ampro two and then you got a Squire jazz master, you're going to be like, Oh, the Squire is my favorite. Now it's replaced this. But I think if you had the Squire jazz master first and then you got an Ampro two, there could be people out there who are like, I wrote the Ampro two is a great guitar. I love this guitar but the Squire is still my favorite. Right. Because it's like, it's what you know. It's it's home. Yeah, totally. Like, I, I've i got the, the Mexican Duo Sonic, and then I had I bought that other Duo Sonic, the oh, more they recent Duo Sonic. One. And, uh, you know, the Fender one. They're both Fender They're both Fender. Ones. Like, the, the newer the newer Fender yeah. one. Uh, and in a lot of ways, the newer one was a nicer guitar, mm-hmm. a more playable guitar, a more practical guitar, a more approachable scale uh, mo- more modern hardware and things like that. Cooler looking finish on it, mm-hmm. but I just didn't vibe with it. And it came with damage that wasn't disclosed in the listing. Right. But right. I also just didn't vibe with it. Like if you vibe with something, yeah, then that's it. You know, that's it. I vibe with my original, not my original, but in the first, the, the duo Sonic that I bought first. You know, because <laughs> I got so many hours with that thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just, it's connected to my body at this point. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Like, it's such a personal question whether or not you should sell your favorite guitar. Yeah. And Without like you us said, knowing why it's your favorite or what it is, yeah. you know, like if it, if it can't be replaced, if you can't get it back, then I'd say sell other stuff, sell your plasma. So is, is that a thing? Sell your, you know, break off a piece of, uh, of your liver and sell that. <laughs> sell your body on the street no no don't break the start, law and start, no. start an only fans okay start an only fans there you go <laughs> don't sell your body on the street sell it on the internet yeah yeah no i don't know um but yeah i think the reasons how long you've been attached to an instrument you know uh that's the other tough thing like the two guitars that i'm thinking like well the jack thing is nowhere near my favorite guitar Right. I think that's like a guitar I would, also, I would be grabbing because it's the guitar I've had the longest. Also, we don't know the context or the intensity or seriousness of the bills either. If is this is life and death, no piece of gear is worth it. If this is housed or homeless, no piece of gear is worth it. Worth yeah. it. Pay your bills. You know, do what you got to do. If this is food in your family's stomach or not, Put food in your family's stomach. Sell your stuff. Like no piece of gear is worth more than very real human things like that. Like at the end of the day, they're tools. You know, you wouldn't, you, it's, it's slightly different, but you wouldn't be like, I could never sell this drill. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a tool for completing a task. We have, we develop attachments to them, but they should not you know, overtake the value of so many other things in our lives. But Ryan, this is a 1997 Milwaukee impact drill, right? <laughs> one eighth horsepower. And this Are one drills measured in horsepower. I don't know. This one came, came in a very rare shade of red. There was a, it was a manufacturing <laughs> error. They only made a hundred of these drills in this slightly brighter red. And it's worth so much money. Oh Sell it and pay your bills. You know, but if, if it's, if you can pay your bills other ways and keep your favorite guitar, I think, I think that's my vote. Sell the, sell that's the crap, vote. sell the crap. That's not your favorite. Yeah. 
I think that's it's your fair. favorite. It's your, <laughs> it's your favorite. That's the one you should keep. Keep your favorite. Keep your favorite. Save up. Get some Squire Classic vibes. Make those your favorite, and then sell your favorite. Yes, the answer to this problem is don't sell things. Buy things. Buy. Th- you want to pay your bills? Buy things. Guys, this is 2023. <laughs> the economy's in trouble. The GOP is still not chosen a, a Steve, speaker of this the house. Steve, this is a week and a half later that you're saying this. I they know. still probably haven't chosen a speaker of the house. <laughs> that was the joke, right? Right, okay, all right. Uh, such old news by I the know. time this is... News. Old uh, news. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough spot. I would just like, do you have any kids you can sell? <laughs> can you go get, uh, go, go drive for Uber for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sell your, sell your mileage. Amazon. What's that? Amazon flex. Is that a thing? That's where like you deliver, you deliver stuff? Amazon packages in your personal vehicle. What, what happens if you sign up for that and you end up delivering packages to your own house? <laughs> I bet that happens. It probably does all the time. I, I'll I'll drop this off on the way home. <laughs> but then, like, because of the way the the system is, like, you have to drop it off within a certain time, or yeah. you get dinged. So you have to like you have to deliver stuff to your own home. You're like, this is so stupid. I could be doing other things right now. <laughs> all right, let's let's get into ads. Yeah, let's do an ad. This ad. Uh, was sent by well, let's, Matt let's, Good. Let's remind everyone, we are in 2023 and maybe beyond, we are making an effort to make sure that this program, 60 Cycle Hum, the, the audio podcast or the video show on YouTube, gets the most extreme of eBay, the most egregious of eBay, the most ridiculous of reverb, the craziest, the crustiest of craigslist all these extreme adjectives of various places you could find used guitar ads we want to see all of them and the way that we're making that happen is we're picking a favorite of three ads that we cover every episode and awarding the person who submitted to it to us via email a 20 dollars gift card to the retailer of their choice depending on their geography send that ad to 60 cycle humcast at gmail.com uh, you could be a winner and earn your spot on the in the Hall of Adventurers. No, it's the Adventurers Club. You I, could win a spot in the Adventurers Club. We're gonna make this happen. I got trademark. I got a plan. Steve has a plan. All right, Ryan. Okay, we got ourselves a classic art guitar here. This was sent by Matt Good. Uh, he found this in a group called Guitars for Sale. The seller says, this is all hand done by myself, asking $250, no other details. I think I know, oh, you know what? I know what this is. God, this is not worth $250. <laughs> this is what is a, it, Steve? This is an Epiphone S310. Ah. One of those Batwing Epiphones. You think it, I, the headstock looks like it's been reformed, it's re, though. It's reformed. It's a reformed headstock. But remember, we had this whole thing where we looked at uh, Epiphone Strat copies a few weeks ago. And the thing that stood out to us is how shitty the hardware looks. Right. That's That's got to be. This hardware looks like that to me. All right, I think that's all right. what this is. Oh yeah, those bridge saddles and stuff. Yeah, well, it could be. Well, also, there like was the, a lot of guitars that had those crappy bridge saddles. But also, like the pickup covers, like yeah. the fact that the stra- the bridge pickup is like slightly, ever so slightly more forward than it's supposed to be. I think the pickguard has been put on, or this is the wrong pickguard because look at that gap. I think the whole pickguard is just put in the wrong place. Oh, maybe. Also, uh. I don't know how that bridge is staying in there because there's no springs holding it in. Look at the back. It's just pulled all the way. This thing's a mess. There's no output jack. We don't even need to talk about the art. We can talk. I didn't even notice the output jack. Right. This guitar functionally is a mess. It's an art piece at this point, and they're asking two fifty dollars for their art. All right, let's talk about the pros. Okay. Pros. Pros before hose, right? Front of the guitar uh, has a, like, the front and back of the guitar have several. This is very folk arty. Um, nice Johnny Cash references. 
Uh, you know, it says the man in black. It's a black Strat style guitar. Of course, Stratocaster is uh, what Johnny Cash is most famous yeah. for. I stole that joke from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made that before we were recording. So thank you for making sure you said um, that, Steve. <laughs> the The guitar has flames on the front, you know, which is a reference to Ring of uh, Fire. Ring of Fire. Uh, I think. It's got a bottle of Jack Daniels. Which is a reference to. Is, Johnny Cash being an alcoholic or something? Was, uh, that in, was that in the movie? Got the man in black written on a piece of note paper. There's a candle. There is his Johnny Cash written on the pit guard. There is, is pen that, striping around the pit guard. Is there that is anything some sort of like really, what his signature looks like. I have no idea, but that they tried to make it look like a Jack Daniels sort of script. I'm really trying to figure out what's going on with the fretboard. It's black. I think the fretboard has been painted. I think they painted the entire neck black, but it also looks like they did some sort of weird wear pattern on the fretboard to make it look like it's been played a bunch or something. There's a, a lot. Ha Someone spent a lot of time working on this as yeah. art. Uh, they really want this guitar to look super played. Um, so they've definitely like my, this, the fretboard is, that's actually what my harmony looks like. Okay. Which my harmony is a 70 year old guitar. So it should right. look like that. The, the port, the portrait work on this is like below. I'm not going to say it's bad because it's better than bad, but it's below good tattoo portrait level. Mm -hmm. work like it it everything just looks a little off did, did you know it's, it's it's not uncanny valley but it's pushing in that direction of like oh no that's not really a human figure i you think know? the portrait on the front is okay but i wouldn't think that this if just without all the other references if i just saw the front i would not think it's johnny cash i might buy that it's like an interpretation of what Richie Valens would have looked like as an old man. No, I think I would have figured out that it's Johnny Cash. I mean, on the back, I definitely would have figured out that one of them is Johnny Cash. Are they both supposed to be Johnny they're, Cash? I the believe back? they're both supposed to be Johnny Cash, but one of them definitely looks like Anthony Perkins. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm going to say right now as, as an, as an artist, the, the, my skill as an artist, like I don't do, portrait work like mm -hmm. this i i wouldn't even be close to this um in this style so i it's, it's not me fully dogging on it but the reality of it is that this is not an expert you right. know like, human portrait like the entire back of this guitar is a tribute to the Folsom prison live album right uh you know from the date the real the question is here is are you you're not buying the guitar because the guitar has big problems sure uh so are you buying the art for 250? I think at 250, like, I mean, this is, you know, a, a TJ Friday's wall decoration level of art, mm -hmm. which yeah. I would be fine with. Like if I saw this hanging up, even in like, you know, a hard rock cafe or something like that, I'd be like, okay, that's an interesting, like piece of folk art sort of tribute to, to Johnny cash. Yeah. But I'm, I, you know, the price says it, this isn't, this isn't, you know, high art. And I don't think the the seller thinks it is anyway. Here's here okay. Here's my here's my problem with this. Okay, guitar. okay. I've got a couple. The more I look at it, the more I wonder if the things being on fire on the front is uh, a happy accident that they did not intend. Is it fire? Or is it smoke? Either way, like I don't. Maybe it's supposed to be smoke. I think it's smoke. Um. So maybe it's not a Ring of Fire reference. The reason I say that is because the lyrics on this notepad, notebook, whatever, uh, is Man in Black. The big title on the front of the guitar is Man in Black. On the headstock, it says Johnny Cash, the Man in Black. On the back of the guitar, if you, uh, oh, it, it just says Outlaws and Johnny Cash and a dollar sign. It says Johnny Cash all over this thing. Th this is a very... Um, it's a theme. It's a very singularly themed. Does not give Johnny Cash a lot of depth. Um, also, it's a custom guitar spelled C U S T U M. 
Yeah. Also, uh, Man in Black was an album that was released in 1971. So it would not have been on the uh, Folsom Prison Blues album. <laughs> no, it's a tribute. Like, it's not meant to be anything more than a tribute. But I'm saying, like, it's such a specific tribute that, like, it's it's like... Uh, Oh, also, he performed the perfor- the prison performance was at San Quentin in 1969. Was there more than one? I don't know. Well, he had a song, uh, Folsom. No, I know. I yeah. know. It's an, it's an, okay. It, he recorded and he Folsom Prison Blues Live was in 1968. That album. Here's here's the question, Steve. Yes. For two fifty, do you think it's do you think it's worth the cash? No, I'm no, not saying I'm not no, saying for you because I would not buy this for myself for two fifty. I wouldn't. I'm not going to decorate my house with this. Well, then who would you buy this for? But like in the in the scenario where I like I said like you know decorating a TGI Fridays or like a Bennigan's or something like that like a a bar. If you're decorating a bar, if I was a bar owner, do you think that this would be a like at that price, the mojo that you're buying with this kind of folky art take on this, you hang this behind up behind the bar as a decoration sort of thing. Uh, you know, you could spend two fifty on all sorts of like stuff that's decorative. Sure. That's less okay. Got yeah. less going on. If with that as the criteria, right. then this would be a buy buy buy. I think it's a good buy. This bar also has to have a like 1980s Budweiser sign. And a Velvet Elvis. Sure. No, it's for a specific vibe. Yeah. So you know. uh, maybe it's got a Dale Earnhardt poster somewhere. Um, it's got... No, yeah, we're not going to go with Dale. Dale's too new. We're going to go with like one of the old uh, Petty, whichever the Petty was. Sure, sure. Richard Petty from like the 70s. Um, the jute box is Elvis, Cash, Haggard, Waylon Jennings. If you come in and you ask for any song newer than 1985, you are banned from my bar. For right, my, for right. Oh, right. What's that? You want to hear some Toby Keith? Go fuck yourself. You're no longer welcome. If you come back again, I will shoot you for trespassing. Right, right. Toby Keith. <laughs> Keith Urban? He's not even American. How can you make music about a country, the United States, when, when you're, you're not the, even from here? You're not, you're not from the right country. I didn't even actually know that he wasn't from... <laughs> I don't actually. Country. I don't actually believe that. I did always think it was funny. For I apparently Australia has a has a bustling country music scene. I want to. Uh, I want to hear country music from and, all over the world. And I will say, Quigley Down Under, possibly one of the great cowboy movies. Oh, you're a, so, you're a big Quigley fan, huh? Big Quigley fan. He's he's see Steve is on all the Quigley Facebook groups. <laughs> are there Quigley Facebook? Groups? I guarantee you there are. <laughs> there's probably like 12 people in it i literally out so uh, it's probably because there, there's 12 people in one group there's 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 14 in another because they had a split a few years oh back God. over something they couldn't agree on it was big drama and they have a whole podcast about it you know there's oh there's rival gosh. podcasts too uh no there's a video on youtube that i found really fascinating where somebody fig tries to figure out uh how they're how how well do you know that movie I have watched it, okay, but so it's been probably 15 years. Yeah, so, okay, so there's a scene in the movie where uh, they, like, the uh, this guy on horseback runs out and he, like, puts a bucket down and basically uh, uh, Alan Rickman's character is like, go right out there, put this bucket down, and we're going to see how good of a shot Quigley is, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember so this scene, there. yeah, yeah. So there's a YouTube video where someone get, like, looks at the horse and is like, that horse is going as as fast as it can, which is like 20, like 25 miles or 35 miles an hour. And it does it for this many seconds. So that bucket is at approximately like the yardage. And then he figures out like, is this shot even possible? Right. And it's like, yes, it is possible. If you are the absolute greatest marksman with this particular weapon, but like the bullet and the load would actually reach out there and like be able to reach. Okay. But it was like some ridiculous, like 680 yards. Anyway, yeah, I watched that video, Ryan. Do I like Quigley Down Under? <laughs> Have you seen Quigley Down Under? Or did you just watch that video on YouTube? 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, I really, I only watched the video. I've never seen the movie. Are you being serious? No, I've watched that. Okay. That was a movie that was like, if it, if that movie came on TV in my house, we watched it. When I was like, when I was young, I always thought of like quickly down under is to crocodile Dundee. What romancing the stone is to Indiana Jones. But I, looking back in I hindsight, can, and, and I think because they were marketed that way, like here's an Australian right. adventure. Looking in hindsight, like Quigley Down Under is definitely not trying to be Crocodile Dundee. No, Crocodile I mean, Dundee is very much like a fish out of water right, story. Right. It's a very, it's a much more unique movie. Um, Quigley, well, they're both unique movies, but you know, like Quigley Down Under is a western. Yeah, Quigley Down Under is very much. Um, I don't know what you would compare it to, but it's like it it's a fi- it is a fish out of water story, but it's also like a real American cowboy right going to Australia where they also have cowboys because they have ranches right uh, but it's all like a little bit of a of like a are these guys real cowboys? American cowboys are the best right right. They're, they're down here. They're roping kangaroos. We're up in America. <laughs> I I rope cows. Yeah, this big difference, right? They don't something have, like that. They don't have cows down in Australia, right? It's so illegal. okay. So what about you? For two fifty, are you putting this in your bar? Yeah, for two, sounds, I think you're putting no, for, this in for, your bar. If I was in charge of decorating a bar, like someone's like, here, here's a budget of a bunch of money. Like, go get me all sorts of random things to decorate my bar. But this would be no brainer. I can't imagine trying to run a country bar in 2023. Like, I'd have to play so much music that I do not like. That's the issue. <laughs> yeah, Steve. That's, that's my problem. Music that he doesn't like. You know, it's your bar. You choose what happens there, Steve. Uh, yeah, but you got to make money, man. You do have to make money. That is the problem. All right, let's move on. What are we doing next, Steve? Uh, uh, sponsors? Good grief. We're doing housekeeping. If you want to support these sorts of shenanigans, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle homecast. We have a new cost. We're spending $80 a month in awarding people for the best ad of each episode. Some so. months it'll be $100. Some months it will be a hundred dollars. That's true. That's crazy. So we uh, we do need to make up that cost. If you want to support our, our efforts Jeez. here, uh, please check out the link to Patreon down below so that we can do this fun thing that we had an idea for, and hopefully it all works out. Yeah, you know, I think it's going to be fun. I think, I think it's, it's going to be idea. fun. I think people are going to be really excited about this, and it's going to become competitive. And I think people's feelings are going to get hurt when we Ooh. don't choose their ad. And I'm sorry. Hey, unlimited entries, right? Unlimited Pretty entries. Much. I mean, you, you want to win? Find the best ads. Find the ads that are going to entertain Steve and I the most and make us say, like, yeah, that was a good one. All right. Uh, also, this episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. This is a woodcutter. We're talking about selling pedals earlier. The woodcutter is a pedal that I will probably never sell. It's my favorite rat style pedal. Yeah. It's a woodcutter. I, I say the same thing. The, this is my favorite rat. I've got a bunch of rats around here. When I think about like which rat I would grab to throw on my board, it's the woodcutter every time. I really can't say why. There's just something about like the warmth of it and the way just the the the, the dirt reacts. Like it just feels special yeah. and different to me for some reason. I really can't explain it. It just sounds good. It That's just, sounds, it just good. sounds good. Head on over to BigEarPedals.com. They are back in operation, so you want to get on those lists so you can know when they are building batches of pedals. You know what? I think it. it's the I think it's the the filter. It's the tone stack. Mm. It mm. like a lot of times with rats, I'm like, ah, it's too nasal. Ah, now it's too yeah. muffled. Yeah. Like the the tone stack on the woodcutter has a pretty broad sweet spot. Yeah. Like it, it's got a nice range yeah. on the tone control. That that I think I don't find on other rats. Yep. I think that might be it. This episode is also brought to you by these guys, String Joy. This is the Orbiter. It's the coated nickel wound string. They're crafted in Nashville, Tennessee, just like all of their strings. Uh, and they're playing on stages worldwide. So if you want to check out String Joy, if you need some strings, uh, click the link down in the description below and head on over there and buy something. They've been in business since 2014, just like us, Steve. Wow. They've right, been Ryan. around as long as us. That's wild. It says uh, that on the back. I didn't even know that until just now. It says it right there. I didn't know that either. We've been your favorite guitar podcast since 2014, and Stringjoy wants to become 
your new favorite string brand since 2023. Go check them out. What's new, man? You got anything I new? don't think I got anything new. I Well, you went and looked at my pond. I did go and look at and your pond. You, can you confirm it, it? It is a pond. I guess it's a pond. It's a pond. <laughs> it's a pond. Pond gate. Pond gate resolved. <laughs> um, Do you have anything new? I since did. since last week when we definitely recorded in the same clothes we're wearing right now. What was the thing? Oh man, I had something. I was like, that's what I should talk about for what's new, but then I forgot. Mm. So so much for that. Ow. Why did you with magnets over? You're playing with a very <laughs> strong magnet. How do they work? On, on the side of my desk to hold cables. Um Man, I thought I had There's a new, nothing new. I thought I had a new thing. There's nothing new. Uh, I mean, in, in in the week since we recorded last, like everything's good now. The government is fixed. Uh, it, California is dry again. Uh, all the water went away, and we're everything's good now. But there was enough water that we'll never have, we have a wildfire yes. ever again because we'll be able to put them out so fast. We have enough water More now. Water. We don't have too much. We're back to being the bread basket of America. Yeah, yeah. Everything's so great now. The fruit basket of America. That's the update. Uh, everything is really, really good now. Everything is so good. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to everyone in the entire world. Uh, things are good now. All right. Man, I had an actual what's new. What was it? <laughs> you know, if you remember it later, then just drop it Damn wherever. It. Who cares? All right. Do we want to do another ad? Yeah, this ad was sent by Craig Brinker. It's called Purple Spots. Fender Stratocaster, this guitar would be great. Uh, would he, this guitar would he a great find for a player on a budget? Uh, it has new strings, and the guitar itself works great. The previous owner, for some reason, has attached purple fur spots. That's oh my god, that's what that is. It, yeah, they used to be purple fur. Now it just looks uh, like black streaks. You would re, if you would re, or you would remove these if you buy it. The guitar would look much nicer. Brand new. This guitar costs over eight hundred dollars. Well, that that's not exactly. And True. yeah, okay. I looked at the serial on this. Do you want to take a guess at the at the age? Yeah, it's a 2002. How did you do that in your head? Because I know how to read Fender serials from 1990 to now. Okay, which part of it tells you 2002? The so the in the 1990s, Fender Mexican guitars um, used an MN serial. Okay, and so, so and then is, a number. And this, since this is an MZ, that told MZs you it was 2002? Are from the, no, so MZs are from, so MN is from like 1990 to 1999, I think. And then MZ was from like 2000 to 2009. And I think in 2010, they switched to MX. Now, I don't, I guess I don't know what the current one is, if it's still MX. So, y- and then after that, the first number is a pretty good approximation of the year of manufacture. So 2001, so like 2000 would be MZ0, 2001 would be MZ1, 2002 would be MZ2, 3, 4, 5, etc. There is some variation on it where sometimes like an MZ2 might be made in like late 2001 sure. or in early 2003. Steve, do you do you feel that right now what's happening? No, cuz I people is- are actually learning something by watching <laughs> this ridiculous show that we do. That's crazy. I thought that was common knowledge. I didn't know it. I had to look it up with a serial number thing. So 2002. I will say where I get screwy, I do use the serial number data uh, frequently is like when you start looking at stuff like from the 80s, they used a different letter every year. Okay. And for Japanese stuff from 1984 to 1987, they just use, that's all Japanese e what they call e series. But if you're looking at years. Mexican fenders, you're probably looking at something late 90s yeah. through current. Uh, so in 2002, these were probably not selling for 800. No, in 2002, this would have been like a 350 dollar guitar. Okay. Uh, in I, I looked up some 2002 Mexican Fenders. Do you want to guess what they're going for right now? I would in, guess. In unpurple dotted. In unpurple dotted, fully normal condition. Right, this thing's not just purple dotted. The, the finish isn't. It's missing uh, two pickups. It's missing a switch. It's missing a pot. It's missing knobs. Well, it doesn't need a switch because it only has one pickup. It has an, a single EMG. The pick the pick guard has been mangled multiple times. Like there's all sorts of stuff going on here. Where do you, where's the besides the cutting out for the EMG? 
there's extra holes around and stuff. And like, it's just, you, you would need, you'd need to invest probably $150 into this guitar to get it stock. Yeah. Um, so without, I, would, I wouldn't take this back to stock unless, okay. unless I just, no, had this parts, is, if I did, if I had parts laying around, this is an opportunity to mod for sure. Yeah. Uh, so in assuming in stock clean condition, $400, you think four hundred dollars on the used market for two thousand two? Two thousand two in normal condition, you're gonna find listings between three hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars. So, uh, when we first started this podcast nine years ago, yeah, we could you could almost guarantee that that was like the value of Mexican strats. Like no, Mexican strats st- were just like three hundred four hundred dollars. That's what you, you that's what you pay for them. Yeah, I and, I, I, and when we started this show in two thousand fourteen, I would not pay more than three hundred dollars for a Mexican strat okay. master. I looked up. I only checked eBay. Okay, I was seeing two thousand two Mexican strats go in the six and seven hundred. Really? Yeah. Wow. In clean condition. Wow. So I, you know, if Craigslist is a different story, local, you know, Facebook marketplace stuff is a different story offer up and so, so on. Uh, you know, there's, there's deals that happen. I'm sure reverb is a totally different story. Yeah. I'm looking at reverb right now to see, uh, if I can pull up the pro here we go. 1998 to 2005 standard Stratocaster. 525. 525, 380. Um, for that same range, two thousand four for five fifty, five fifty six. Jesus, six fifteen. Yeah, I'm. T- I'm Their telling estimated you. used value right now is the range. So this is like a six month range is three hundred and sixty five to six hundred and eighty seven dollars. Up to six hundred eighty seven. I think you're seeing the clean ones on the high end there. So I think four hundred is is high for this situation. I to me this feels like maximum three hundred. Yeah, but. You want to raise the value of this to four hundred dollars? Go get some freaking goo gone, yeah, and fix this. Get any like normal strat pick guard that's loaded, and slap it on there for a hundred bucks. You know what? Honestly, if this was not covered in all this wacky sure, adhesive, sure. just as is, get some knobs. Spend twenty bucks on knobs, ten bucks on knobs off of Amazon or whatever. But get some that, knobs. No, that's totally a hundred dollars in elbow grease. Um, to get that gunk off. Get the. You think it's how? What do you mean a hundred dollars in elbow? I'm grease? I'm talking about effort. Oh, I'm talking about work oh, time. You sure, know, you sure, get sure, you sure. get your goo gone. You get a razor and you're scraping that off. You know, honestly, this is a good opportunity for a refin. Yeah, it could be. You you hit um, the, you hit this with a heat gun. You just pe- that peel off that that plastic poly with a heat gun and a scraper, and you just take it down to wood. Of course, is it real or not on the headstock? Going back to the headstock, the first thing actually I noticed when you started talking about the serial number is this uh, cigarette burn. Yeah, there's I that going it, on it, too. Is it a thing that it? Which is weird because normally you associate. It looks like, like so much more than a cigarette burn, though. You, right. Well, I, that's why I'm saying I, I don't know if it's real or not, but it's. Right. Like, seems like it's trying to be a cigarette burn. Um, But then it's like, why would you have purple fur? Usually, usually when you see a cigarette burn on a Fender guitar, somebody's going for a vintage. They're trying to do that SRV or Van Halen thing. Also, it's like, that's why you have an EMG. Right. I want to see what this looked like before all the purple purple fur fell off. I want to see what the person did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, apparently, even it, they made it sound like that's. I don't know. This okay. So if this was look, knowing that, that Mexican fenders are going in the five hundreds to six hundreds now in clean condition. Sure. The answer is no, but where is the price where if you saw this pop up local, it becomes tempting to you. Two fifty. Two fifty is tempting to you. Yeah. I think you're right. I think at 300, I'm looking at this like there's. I'll let some. Uh, I'll let some kid pick it up and do the you know throw the elbow grease into it because it's gonna be it's gonna be time. It's a time thing. Yeah. For that. Well, think about like. There's not even a picture of the back of this guitar, which is a little concerning. Yeah, we don't know how much work you like. Did the fur go all over the back? It's tough because I'm valuing my time as an adult with children and uh, self-employment and stuff like that. And you're valuing your time the same. Uh, Trying to think back to when we were 
like young college dudes or like dudes without a lot of stuff going on. We had time for projects. I'm trying to think in that frame of mind, like Mm -hmm. where would I be tempted right now? And I I still think you're right. I think 250. Yeah. I back in when we were in college, when I was in college, because you and I were in college. And, but you have to upscale like, for like current prices. Sure. Uh, like what you're but getting. That's what I'm saying like 250 because you're getting a neck. You're getting a Mexican neck, which they're great project necks. They're, you know, a Fender Mexican Strat neck is a great place to start a project. Sure. They're great necks. Uh, the body is like, okay, like it's a, it's a Strat body. You can get Strat bodies all sorts of different ways. Uh, I don't think there's anything special about the wood or the build of Mexican strap bodies that is a strat. Mm-hmm. It is compatible with millions of parts out there. Everything else about this is swappable. It's really the neck you're buying. It has the cigarette burn thing going on, which some people might like the look of. It's not an it's not a deal breaker for me, but you really are buying the neck. And then the rest of it is work. So yeah, I, that's how I feel about. It. I think I think, think you're right, Steve. Two fifty is the tempting price, where it's like, oh yeah, maybe maybe I'm ready to start a project, and this could be a project starter, you know. All right. Do you have anything else about? To, no, I'm not done with this. Yet. All right, all right, all right. Hands off. I'll let Steve finish. Right now, apparently, seventeen miles away, or one point seven point one miles away, you could get a. Classic Vibe 70 Stratocaster for $350. That's a classic Vibe, though. But that's $50 cheaper than what this is currently listed for, and it's freaking cherry. Right. Well, yeah, you could get all sorts of Squires that are in way better condition than this for, for less money. Somebody's got a uh, Classic Vibe 60s Telecaster. So it's a Telecaster. I get a different guitar for $300. Again, that's... Cherry. Yeah, with the double binding. That look, and that's the double binding. Right. Like that is a beautiful guitar. And it's in like minty mint. This is, I mean, even 250, I feel I'm like, is this too high? You're really you're buying the pedigree with it being a Mexican neck versus an Indonesian or Chinese classic guy. I would say, and may I, you know, I don't know what appropriate inflation would be for the used market. I don't the playability. Really, the play. There's no difference in playability. I don't. There. I don't want to think that's that hard about this. I think for this to be interesting in like 2012, 2014, when we started this, it would have to be like 175. Yeah. And and at that point you're looking at it and going like okay Mexican neck a hundred bucks, assuming the the wiring harness is actually clean. I can no, maybe it's not. Get, <laughs> I, I can, guarantee you that's. I can maybe get like eighty bucks for looking the, at the quality the of work on pickup. this. I'll be I'd be surprised if the wires are soldered. They're probably tied around the pots. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but even that neck like. It's got a freaking burn in it. Right. And it's not like it's a special neck. It's you, you can find all sorts of Mexican necks out there. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the market on those is going up. Yeah. Of a brand new Fender Player Series guitar is over $800. That's the other other thing with this. This is a 2002. Right. 2002 is when they, I would say they started making them, the Mexican uh, strats, uh, a little better. I think, you know, when, well, like when the, you're in like the before, like nine, like 90 to 90 or like 92 to 95 is real kind of hairy. And where were they slowly yeah. improving? I think 2002 by 2002, you're probably uh, where we're at now. Okay ones, I feel like ones. like the Mexican fenders now are at the build quality level that that USA fenders were. In the, Back then, in, yeah. the, in the '90s and early 2000s, I, I would I would say like your Player Plus Strat, I would throw that against like yeah, uh, it's it's got some different features, and I don't you know someone's gonna no, say it, like well it uh, it would be nitro and nitro's better, but as nitro aside, it wouldn't I be would, that color if it was nitro. It, that's true. Uh, I would throw your Player Plus up against like most of the highway ones that I played. Sure, that I've that I've tried. Yeah. Um, no, to in me, terms of quality, but again, if you, you know, if you want a nitro finish, you got to go highway one right. or um, I think um, they did some of the American specials 
to the me, per- it feels is the performer series in Nitro. I don't remember, but to me, it feels the way that American Fenders felt in the '90s and early 2000s. Right. Like it just it it feels and plays that way. It's like that's the impression I get when I pick yeah. it up. It's like, oh no, this is just a full blown Fender. It's not you know, like because Mexican Fenders throughout the '90s and, and 2000s were like, oh well, here's your compromise. Yeah, in the '90s, you know? in the like in the late '90s, early 2000s, did you ever have to knock on wood? Oh yeah, all the time. Okay, cool. And I know someone who did. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, the next, the next ad. The Bef- next ad before is, we decide. The next ad is for Chase Bliss. Oh, sponsor spot. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Chase Bliss. I'm holding the habit. Their website, I used to always say it's chaseblissaudio.com, but apparently now it's just chasebliss.com. Congratulations, guys, on getting that URL. They're moving. They're moving out to all the other senses. Yeah, not Vision, just audio. Taste. Uh, feel this is the habit what would you say about the habit? esp Ryan? it's a delay hey if you're looking to start a new habit might as well start a chase bliss habit right that's what i'm saying do you hey. see how there's velcro on this that's because you use it that's because i've used it i've got serial number zero three one nine three you tell me your serial on your habit uh steve do you have any habits uh no but i probably actually no, i don't mean like this habit i mean like in your personal life like what's that what's oh that? sure uh, driving. I like to drive. Is that a habit or a necessity? <laughs> a habit is something that you do habitually. Um, right? No, it, it, yeah, that, yeah. That yeah. doesn't necessarily have a use. It's is just sh- like is showering a habit. Yeah, I guess so. You don't technically need to shower. You could do like the French bath thing. Just put a bunch of deodorant on. <laughs> do, do you... you could. <laughs> i'm sure i have a lot of habits but you don't have one of these i do not have that habit i do not have one of those habits (laughs) head on over to chasebliss.com check out their full lineup their pedals are wild they now have the uh the these little uh field guides that are basically like really straightforward uh product manuals That are everyone I've known who has looked into them, who has bought one, ha- absolutely loves them. So if you have a Chase Bliss pedal that you haven't, uh, you've been like maybe struggling a little to figure out, you can only do some basic stuff, but nothing too advanced. Maybe you need a field guide. Go There's get, so much. There's so much you can do with these pedals from Chase Bliss. Like all their pedals, like getting the dip switches and all the assignable things you can do with all the knobs. You need as much help as you can get. I really thought I was going to go somewhere interesting with that. Do you have any habits? Question. And then I like, I had nowhere to go with it. <laughs> Ryan, let's do an ad. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this last ad was sent by Michael Cross, who might be Michael Cross. We're not sure. What, what is your dang name, Michael? Uh, We're this all is confused. A 1961 Wenger Show Mobile Bandwagon for twelve thousand dollars. This is a really cool and rare opportunity to own your own personal stage. This can be rented out for wedding parties, plays, DJ, karaoke, and more. I rent it out for venues or buy for twelve k. Uh, this is a 1961 Show Mobile Show Mobile Show Mobile Bandwagon made by Wenger. Let me go with Show Mobile. Can design it any way you want, tow it to where you want, and crank it open. I'm more so looking to rent it out, but I'm open. Figure it out, He's man. Gonna rent it. Figure it out, pitter patter. Uh, I'm more, but I open to selling it as full electricity and lights. PM for rentals, Goffstown, New Hampshire. I wish I had an excuse to have something like this. You do. But I don't. I don't even have something that could that could tow this. That's true. That's true. <laughs> But Ryan, how are we supposed to do the 60 cycle hum US live tour without a show mobile show mobile bandwagon? Like if Dinosaur Ghost, if it was feasible to do like a it's like you're 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 going on a tour where you're playing outdoors a lot. Like I think this makes sense in parts of the country where I don't live. You know, like you 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 haul up to some you know, field somewhere and you throw an impromptu little festival or something like sure. that. Like everywhere I think of that, I would like go to play venues. The play shows are venues. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I love the fantasy of hauling this around, like fully decorating the inside to be just, you open it up and you're ready to go. You're ready to play a show. You drop it open. You're at a street fair you're at a backyard party, you're at, you know, like some sort of country barbecue and you just pull up, you 
crack it open and you play a gig and you pack it up and you mm-hmm. go again. Like, and I love the styling of this thing. It's got this very mid century modern thing going on that it looks like a toy. You know, right. it, it looks like an old Fisher Price toy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? This also needs, like, you're going to need a generator. Oh, sure. Uh, you're going to need a lot of uh, things like that. Also, it doesn't take. Here's the thing. You used to need a like. Let's think about the power needs of, of an actual band these days. Because mm-hmm. you used to need a generator because you were using old style big amps and PA's. Yeah. And you were also running a lot of lights. You had to run a lot of lights to do this. And you know, uh, incandescent lights mm-hmm. take a lot of power. LED lights, not so much. I have a feeling, and modern amps and modern PAs and stuff like that, they're a lot more efficient. I have a feeling you could run a band off a couple car batteries. You think so? I think so. Interesting. You would have to charge them off your car while you're going or something like that. But I don't think you would need to run a generator to run a band off of this. Mm. And depending on where you're playing, you could always just plug in somewhere. Look, yeah. there's power lines behind this thing. <laughs> just, just, just sling it up there. Just shimmy up there. Throw a couple alligator clips on some lines. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how electricity works. <laughs> um, you, you just need two of them, right? You here's pick, here's the other thing I'm looking two. at. Uh, in all of these pictures, the the part that like extends out, uh, that is like the front of the stage, uh-huh. does not look very sturdy. This is not a jumping around sort no, of thing. You're gonna, no. you're gonna. This is this is a hanging out bandstand sort of situation. Yeah, I don't know. I think you could make it more sturdy than it looks. It probably this thing probably weighs a ton. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be moved by a vehicle. Well, yeah, it probably weighs more than a ton. Now that I look at it. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> like we're using ton like, oh, that means a lot. No, it probably weighs like two tons. <laughs> 12,000, I have no idea if that's fair. Yeah. The guy wants to rent it or he wants to sell it. I have no idea if that's fair at all. 1961 Wanger Wanger Wagon. I'm just going to look for that and see what comes up. Nothing comes up great. It's one of a kind, Steve. It's priceless. Something like that. Man, it would be fun to do shows with that thing and be able to set it all up, have it decorated. I know I said that already, but I'm just sitting here thinking about like, it. Like, it looks cool. It looks like it would be fun. Yeah. Um, and for a surf band, you don't actually need a PA, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, our, our friend David... He got he he was in a band that was trying to rope him into like splitting the bills to have one of these sorts of things, like they had some sort of van or uh, RV conversion that had like the drop down stage side on it, and the band bought this thing and they all split their money and then they brought him in to be the drummer after the fact mm-hmm. and they're like oh hey uh, you need to help split the cost of this thing and he was like. No, <laughs> I, I, I didn't make the decision to buy that. I'm, I'm not on board. I'm not going to split the cost of that with you guys. And apparently it was a big problem with the rest of the band. And it's like, it sounds like you guys are trying to find band members just to help you pay for your bad decision. <laughs> I mean, this thing, I guess this thing is maybe bigger than I, I found some like pictures of them. Well, imagine someone standing in the back. It's, it's, Good size. It's probably yeah, pretty you know, good size. You can fit like it's like six people across, so you could spread yourself out. Yeah, pretty wide. It's pr- no, I'm looking at this and I'm I'm seeing something that's bigger than most of the stages I play on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, there's if you would look you up buy it? Wanger Bandwagon. Everyone out there watching and listening right no, now. No, Wanger Band Showmobile. That's what it's actually. Showmobile is what it's called. Right. Hmm. Changing my mind. It's hundred percent worth it. No, I'm not changing my mind. You know what this would be fun for? What? You ever seen the uh like the backyard uh uh like shed bar thing? 
mm-hmm. where people get like an like a shed and they convert it into like a fully themed like tiki bar or like sports bar or something like that. This would be a really cool thing for that sort of deal. Right. Like a you put this in your backyard, you fold it out for parties and it's just a full blown sort of like experience in there. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. I like that idea. Yeah. Would, it, would you spend $12,000 on that That's, idea? No, probably not. No. But I love the look of it. All right. You could like, the thing is, is like, I mean, the fold up part, I guess would might be the tricky part. I don't know. Somebody said we should get construction jobs since I don't know how much 65 pounds is or whatever. <laughs> um, Do you still think I can't lift 65 pounds sure over my head? You can lift 65 pounds okay. over your head. <laughs> Someone said they were with you on that. <laughs> um, but what I was thinking is like, this is $12,000. If you didn't like need it to fold up, uh, you could probably build this. I mean, I guess building stuff is hard too. Here's the thing for me. What's it like inside when it's all closed up? Could you Airbnb this? <laughs> Cause it could pay for itself. <laughs> Can you Airbnb something that doesn't have a bathroom? Probably. If Airbnb won't take you, I'm sure VRBO will. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we have to decide. Let's decide. What this are, one's tougher. Last last episode was like a no brainer with that Muppet drum kit. Yeah. Um. How about we just do it on three? Well, I'll go three, two, one, and then we'll just say. What I feel it like is. I need to talk through it a little bit. Okay, I already got my. I know what mine is. But so. if I was to, if I was to choose to have any one of these things for myself, mm-hmm. I would choose the travel stage. I don't know where I'd put it, but I don't think that's what makes necessarily what I would vote for for an ad. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote for what I had the most fun talking about, what I felt was most engaging. Okay, you as ready? an ad, can we count down? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Three, two, one, purple, purple spots. spots. All right. All right. Uh, who said I wonder that? how often we're actually going to disagree. I don't know. Because we're kind of like on the same vibe a but lot of the time. that was sent by Craig Brinker. So congratulations, Craig. We'll reach out to you somehow. We'll have to figure out where that ad came from. Welcome so to the from? Adventurer Club. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Adventurer Club. Adventurer Club. We'll figure something out. We're going to lock like it in. Idea. We're going to have a graphic we're going to have like a, a, a hall of fame. We're going to have a, a membership list All right, you for gonna, the adventure. You're going to drop some, some uh, images. I will make, make you a graphics. header for your spreadsheet that you make. Is there a way for you to make a spreadsheet that everyone can view, but only you can edit it sort of thing? Yeah, I could do that. Um, or what I was just going to do, cause it would only be like once a week. I could integrate it into my pot when I update the podcast on Sunday nights is I was just going to put it on the website. That's oh, okay. what I, that's what I'm thinking. You want a website page for it? Yeah. Okay. I can do that. Adventure. Adventure. That, that's why when we were talking about it last week, I was like, I have an idea for this. The upfront effort is going to be more significant than I like, but I think if I can get it to where I want it, well, it's just, it's WordPress. Just, I know it's it. yeah. WordPress. I, WordPress isn't super hard. I had to edit our marketing I had to edit our support the show page the other day because uh, somebody was like, Hey, yeah. International shirts, $30 sounds great. Ooh. And then I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I went to ship it. And the, the shipping to Canada was like $25. Yikes. So, but that's what we had on the site. You can't uh, get shirts from Teespring. I could, I guess I could have done it that way, but it was like a shirt. It was like a shirt sticker patch pack. Oh, okay. For Patreon. Yeah. It was, it, right, no, right. it was like the old, what was used to be on our, it was what used to be on our website for like oh, when, okay. when we had like a hundred shirts. Right. Right. And I would, we would just get money. And so I would we haven't it. updated that website well, it's up, forever. It's, it's updated now. Okay. So, uh, anyway, we run a tight ship over here. This song is <laughs> serious business. This song was sent by Ryan Burnham. He says, dear Rocky and Bullwinkle, this is something from a synth project I've been working on while living in a car and traveling around the U S and Canada. Figured the whole thing would be too long at 10 minutes. So it's only the first half or so. There's no guitar on this yet because of the whole car thing. So all of it was recorded on a Nectar MIDI uh, controller with some free synth VSTs. This is part of my solo project, Impatient Optimist Club, and the song is called Trailblazer. I believe he sent us some stuff. and Was he on the Christmas comp? 
I think so. All right, we're going to play this. It's called Trailblazer. suddenly well he cut it in half no, that's why steve <laughs> i got a question for you okay when you were listening to that song um mm-hmm. if you can recall okay um what part of the song do you key into uh that kind of that uh that synth part like the one in the background like mm-hmm. the one that's like swelling no interesting and that and the drums, the the the, the forward synth part, synth part and the drums. Okay, I was what trying, I was grooving because what I was listening, I was watching both of us. Uh huh. 
and noting that like we were both like keyed in maybe to the same part, but in different ways, but in very different ways, because I'm like, duh, 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 and you're just like, right. I was like, huh, that's, I don't know. I thought that was, I was listening to the like, do, 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 yeah, yeah. do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to you know, just put it out there, I'm guys. Still doing. Email us your songs. MP3s are best. As long as we can download it from the email yeah. sort of thing. Don't, if you can avoid links, that's fantastic. Uh, but just sending us. If it's a Dropbox link. Right, right. Works. But I don't, if you send us Spotify, it's hard for me to grab the song yeah. to put it in. Uh, but it doesn't have to have guitar in it. Just because this is a guitar podcast, it does not have to be a guitar centric. Yeah, we song. just want to hear, hear what, what you guys are making. Yeah. So. All right. Bye, everyone. Stay grounded. <laughs>